Okay, so if I line that up right there, set my pole up. Now, again, it's off by a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it. So I can just leave that. kind of deforming a little funny. So, I go into edit mode. Let's see what I can figure out about this. So I'm going to set my pull offset to zero. I'm going to take these two bones. So you can actually adjust it right like that. One thing that I want to do is actually lock off certain axes. So I just want this one to be able to rotate on the I don't want it to be able to rotate around the Y, and I don't want this one to be able to rotate around Y either. So that looks like it's basically doing what I want it to do. Shift I, active bone. Armature. Now inevitably this one can't work the same. But I believe if I set it to 180, There we go. So one side's going to be 180 degrees off from the other. Alt R, Alt G. Now we can start taking the bones that we don't actually need to control the character and hiding them. So we're going to move them to a, se a separate bone layer. So we can take the thigh bones. Don't want the IK goal or the pull vector, and the arm bones, and move those straight down to there. So you don't need to animate those at all. Move that one there, and we can also move these little IK goals here, as well as this one we don't actually need to animate, the heel deformation bone. We can move that. The master, we want to move to layer 2, because we still want to be able to get at that one, but we don't need to move it too much. The fingers and the hands, are, we need to be able to get at all those. We need to be able to get at the pelvis. There's one small change that we still need to set up. And that is that this spine isn't going to work. It's only got one bone. So one thing we can do is go segments to four, switch to B bone, and all of those are going to look really big. But that's okay. So select all of them, and Alt S will scale the visual representation of the bone. So we can scale all that down. Actually, we can go back over here, go back to shaded. So now we can actually see the bones. There we go. And you'll notice if I, when I go out of edit mode, if you look at the spine, because it has, go back over here, four segments, 
go out of edit mode. Now it looks like four bones, which normally would be really weird to see. But the cool thing is, is that it actually kind of bends like four bones would. It's actually got some some pull to it. So that's really nifty. And then minus one to eight minus. Here it looks like some of my bones got twisted wrong. Minus 180 and minus 180. So now apparently it doesn't want to do that. So if I uncheck connected now set it to minus 180 and then recheck connected it'll stay the same so this one did it also so disconnect minus 180 and connect There we go. So now that's very well done. And one thing we probably want to do is actually set the head to be a hinge bone so that when we rotate the body around, the head, and we'll set the neck to be a B bone as well. So now we rotate that off to the side, the neck will bend a little bit, and the head will try to stay forward as much as possible. You can set the collarbone and the clavicles to be hinge bones as well, but that can get looking a little bit weird. I mean, it helps because it looks like he's actually like getting pulled by something, um, but it's probably not too, too often that you're actually getting pulled by something like that. So one thing we can do is lock the position on these and then if we rotate them even though we have our, s our pivot set to bounding box or something it'll rotate like it was set to individual centers even if it's not so getting good deformations all the way around got the heel got the foot controls all set up really nice it looks like when I was painting on the foot, I accidentally caught a little bit of the other side of it. So you can see, I'm pulling the wrong side of the foot. So, with that, I'm going to grab here, go back into weight paint, and there it is right there. Paint that back to zero. Go back to object mode. And most of these we can actually lock off a couple of axes. So, here, this bone will almost never need to do that. So let's clear these back real quick. Go to locations. Okay, the toe bone. We'll never need to rotate anywhere except for the X, so we can lock Y and Z on both sides. The foot bone just as well. Um, yeah, you're not really going to be doing much rotating off to the side. So, locking those axes here as well. The toe tip bone. I guess you might rotate off of here. Um, I will leave all those open. bones, we don't actually even need these visible. Hide those. And the these bones, clavicle, are almost always going to move together, but we'll leave them separate.
looks like our fingers are actually off kilter, so we'll go back into edit mode. And if I hover bones and click L, it'll select all of them in that chain. I don't actually want all of them, so I'm going to disconnect the finger, the base finger. And then rotate those with control R. And then same for the thumb. So there we go. I think we have a fully rigged character now. those down. Current pose as rest pose. So now, if I move, move these around or something, I can go and just clear it back to that. Anything that you want to be in a specific spot, you can do that. So if for some bizarre reason you wanted this to be your zero rotation, even though you look at the rotation and it says X is at 37 degrees. If I wanted this to be zero, control A, current pose as rest pose, would reset that to zero. But it just resets it as far as the bone's concerned. It doesn't actually reset it for the deformations. So you can use it for pull vectors and a couple of other things, but don't want to use it too, too, too much. So, here he is, Blanderman rig, all ready to go. Um, one thing that Cubies was asking on the forum, or on the chat line, was how to set up constraints. So, in my next little video, I'll be showing how to set up constraints and custom objects. So, we'll be going over that in just a little bit.